the Bible study today. We shall have so that they will know that their resurrection is real. And now, as he was about to go to heaven, he declared unto them, as he is declaring to us today, all power is given unto him, unto Christ. And then he says, because of that, look at verse 19, go ye therefore. Therefore, that means because all power belongs to him. All power resides in him. The power to save, the power to heal, the power to deliver, and the power to set free, and the power to sanctify and make holy. How many people are ignorant of the power that resides in Christ? Because of that, he says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. You find one word there, nations. Actually, in the original, it means all ethnic groups, all people groups, all kinds of people. That means in our nation here, we have a lot of tribes, a lot of ethnic groups, a lot of language groups, a lot of neighbors in our communities. And it says, go ye therefore and teach them. What are we teaching them? That Jesus is Savior. What are we teaching them? That Jesus is the only Savior, a proof of the Father, that there is no other name given among men, whereby we must be saved, except the name of Jesus. Teach them. Let them know. And when they know that, call them to a decision. And then after they come to a decision and they are born again, and they give their lives to the Lord, baptize them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Then in verse 20 it says, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And then it says, behold, I am with you always until the end of the world. He told the whole church to take the whole gospel to the whole world and if you are part of the church of the living God if you are a child of God if you are born again you are saved the calling is coming to you and it says to make this the priority of your life you make this the preeminent thing that you do that all around you you serve the Lord by telling people showing people preaching to people that Jesus Christ is Savior in Mark chapter 16 I mean in from verse 15 and he said unto them Go ye into all the world. It says we should literally go around the whole world. That means then your community, there shouldn't be anybody that is not here, here in the gospel. That means in your village, that means in your town, that means anywhere you are, local government, area, province, or territory, wherever. It says there's nobody that should not hear. Everybody should hear. The men, the women, the young, and the adults. Everybody hearing. It says, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. It says, don't tell stories. Preach the gospel. Don't talk about yourself. Preach the gospel. Don't spread slander or error preach the gospel and don't go and be talking about politics preach the gospel he that believeth that is he that believeth the gospel what's the gospel that jesus is savior what's the gospel that all have seen and come short of the glory of god what's the gospel that no matter what you do no matter what church you go no matter what good works you do you cannot save yourself what's the gospel that whosoever will call on the name of the lord knowing you are helpless to save yourself but jesus christ is willing and ready to save everyone that will come the gospel is that when you call on the name of the lord he will save you it tells us that he that believes that personally is not a family religion it's not a community religion it's not a, you know society religion it is a personal decision the lord is calling us to by the gospel and it says he the individual the man the woman, the boy, the girl, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not, what will happen? Shall be done. That means it's not just hearing. You call the people to a verdict. You call the people to a decision. And those who decide to believe that Jesus Christ is Lord, 
that Jesus Christ died for me in particular. And then I hand over my life in totality. I hand over that to the Lord. Then it says, as I believe and baptize, I will be saved. I pray that if there's anybody there who has not got that salvation, anybody there who has not given his life to the Lord, anybody there who has not repented and turned away from evil, and then accepting Jesus Christ as your only Lord and Savior, anybody there, if you've not done that yet, you'll do that. And then after you've done that and you give your life to the Lord, you tell your friends, you tell your neighbors, you tell everybody around you, Jesus saved me, he will save you too. Give me a good amen. John chapter 4. John chapter 4. It says in verse 35, Say not ye, there are yet four months, and then comes harvest. It says, Say not ye, say not ye. There are some people that are having some self talk, private talk, private discussion, telling one another, telling themselves, and the Lord says, Say not ye. Anything that will bring delay, say not ye. Anything that will bring procrastination, say not ye. Anything that will say, it's not yet time, there's still time. We have to do this first and do this first and do that first. It says, say not ye. It says, this is the priority and this is the essential thing to do. Say not ye. There are yet four months and then cometh the harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white or ready to harvest. It says all those things you are telling yourself, I cannot do that now, I have some other things to do, I'll do it later, when I grow older, when I grow richer, when I've met all my needs, when all these things are done, when I'm putting this in place and put that in place, when the people are ready, he says no, they're ready now, look up and see the fields, and they are white already to harvest. Then he tells us, and he that reapeth receiveth wages, and gathereth fruit unto life eternal, that both he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together. I read, you read, we sow, you sow, every one of us sowing and reaping and bringing souls into the kingdom, we shall rejoice together. You know, all these uh, new districts were planting, all these new churches were raising up. And then the new leaders were choosing, and then we're putting one here, and putting one there, putting another there. The men and the women, the young people and the children, and we are all involved. We're sowing the seed, we're preaching the gospel, and we're teaching people the way of truth and the way of the Lord. And they are responding, and they're coming to the Lord. And the church is growing in your area, and the church is going over there. When we see the results of what the Lord is doing, He says, We shall rejoice together. You rejoice together if you have been involved. You rejoice together if you have won souls. We rejoice together if you are part of the sowers and the reapers. We rejoice together if you are involved in the harvest. I pray that you will not be left alone. You will not be the one standing at you and looking at everybody. What are they doing at this time? What came upon the church at this time? Saturation church planting, evangelism everywhere, witnessing everywhere. Every Sunday we're all going out after the service. Nobody is waiting to see a coordinator or good coordinator. Nobody is waiting to see pastor or anybody. We just finish the service say, the world is starting now. We'll receive a lot. We're going to give a lot to the people. And it is when you get involved like that, then you see the church growing. We are going to rejoice together in Jesus' name. Are you ready? Will you do it? Why don't you rise up and say, Yes, Lord, I will do it.